Hi, uh, my name is Ryan Horsons. I'm a fifth generation dairy farmer here at Horsons Homestead Farms. I farm with my, my dad, Jeff, and my mom, Connie. Um, and we started up a new 12 robot Lely A5 barn 13 months ago now. In the last 13 months, there has been some challenges in, in learning new technology, but we can honestly say it's been one of the best decisions that we've ever made. Um, on our farm, we always try to focus on a couple key things, cow comfort, consistency, quality forages, and working with good people. And we feel like the Lely A5s have given us the, the best of all those worlds, so. With our 12 robots, um, one unique thing we do on this farm is that uh, we built this project as an expansion rather than a replacement. So we do still milk out of our AA parlor that was built in 1996. So we're milking approximately 1,200 cows now in the whole herd. Um, but we, what we do have that's unique is that all cows, regardless of facility, still utilize um, the activity and rumination monitors um, from NEDAP. And our herds people absolutely utilize that information every single day um, to help diagnose sick cows, figure out which cows might have mastitis, um, and breeding off of heats. So if we look over here, kind of at our T4C um, area, um, we can see kind of just some of the general herd, herd stats on the farm. Um, but more importantly, our herds people every, every day will utilize the health reports and the activity monitors so that we can better individual, individually look at each and every single animal. Um, so currently in a robotic facility, we're averaging about 113 pounds energy corrected milk, uh, which translates to about 7.2 pounds of solid ship per cow per day. Um, and we only expect that to go up as we get more comfortable with what we're doing um, and as our mature cows um, get more mature because we did have to purchase a large amount of animals. Um, so we're excited for when they all freshen back in and, and see where we can really take this. In our barn, we put up 12 robots, two robots per pin in the L-shaped design. Um, so right now we're milking approximately 61 cows per robot, so about 122 animals per pin. Um, we group our pins based on stage of lact or age and lactation. So, um, our first pin you can see right out here, these are our oldest girls on the farm. They'd be all third and grader lactation. Um, and then as you move down the barn, um, they go you know, to a second lactation pin, and then at the end of the barn, there's two heifer pins. Um, we believe this you know, lets us feed optimally for, for producing the most amount of milk in the facility. Um, going with the L-shaped design, uh, we thought that kind of gave us the best of all worlds of you know the cow can go can really see when she walks up into that open area so you can see it's a big area um, that she doesn't feel crowded in there she can see what's going on um, and she can comfortably move to whatever robot she wants to get milked in um, one unique feature about that is that both robots in the pen are either a left-handed robot or a right-handed robot um, and they're always exiting towards the feed bunker because the more we can eat get them to eat, the more they're gonna melt. Um, the reason we went with you know, two lefts or two rights in a pen, you know, not one left and one right in a pen, is because cows can develop a preference, so we wanted to kind of make it where, you know, make it consistent. So make it consistent so they can't really choose. People always say, you know, if you milk cows in a stanchion barn and you milk them on the same side every single day, and then one day you decide to milk them from the other side, they're not exactly too happy. So, you know, we kind of wanted to make sure that, you know, cows don't develop a preference or start preferencing one robot over the other. And from what we see in this design is that every robot produces equally. So there's not the one that's facing north-south or the one that's facing east-west that produces a different amount of milk per day or harvests a different amount of milk. They, they harvest milk equally. So in the barn, we started this process of expanding a little over three years ago now. Um, so there was two full years of, of touring, looking at different farms, trying to take, you know, 
what works at this farm, what doesn't work at, at, the, at another farm. You know, robotic, rotary, parallel parlors. We took pieces and parts from every single one of those farms um, and then when working with our consultants and especially our, our Laley Center, we were able to, you know, design the barn that was going to be optimal for our animals. So really, Apps Laley had a, had a huge part in the design of this barn and making it as successful as, as it is today. So we can go out there and look at some of those. All right, so one of the most important things when designing this facility was, was definitely cow comfort. Um, so we wanted to take this facility um, and make it as comfortable for the cows as possible. So we are still deep bedded sand bedding in this facility. Um, deep bed sand, we, we still have headlocks in the stalls. Um, but really, we work very closely with the Dairyland Initiative um, and our, our vet, our nutritionist, um, and this is designing the most comfortable spot for the cows to sleep as possible. Um, so you'll see, you know, the crosswalks are nice and wide. There's tons of open space um, for the cows to do whatever they want. Um, you know, it's just all, it's, it's absolutely the most comfortable environment possible for the cows um, because when a cow is comfortable, um, she's happy and when she's happy, you know, she's gonna perform at her best. So currently we're producing about 113 pounds energy corrected milk in the robots, which translates to about 63, 6,400 pounds uh, per box. We do have several boxes that are approaching or have been above 7,000 pounds per box. Um, so there's definitely no difficulty with harvesting a large amount of milk in these robots. Um, you know, and our goal honestly is to get up to 7,000 pounds per box. Um, on average and we know you know that's that's a difficult goal to hit but you know with the Laley A5 we, we feel like that's possible to achieve so you know every day we we try looking for adv advancements in cow comfort forages um, you know or just advice from our Laley professionals you know of ways we could optimize the facility better um, so everything we do is, is cow centric and just focused on trying to do what's best for the cow our PMR is a, is a mostly corn silage and haylage, haylage based PMR. Um, once you include our pellet, um, the ration still comes out to about a 56% forage diet. So for us, you know, feeding more forage is gonna be cost, cost effective um, and be best for you know, the cow's room and health. Uh, as you can see, this one clearly enjoys what she's eating. Um, but, you know, just like in a conventional facility, the, the more forage you can feed, you know, it's gonna be best for the cow. So although we're introducing a pellet, there's really no, no concerns with how that's affecting rumen health. We're just balancing for that in the PMR. So one question I always get about robotic facilities is how do you manage the foot bath um, area? And how does it not become a, a huge task throughout the week? Um, so for us, what we're trying to do is we're trying to time out our foot bath um, on three consecutive days with a copper sulfate solution. We're trying to time that out with feeding. So essentially, as fast as we can get the animals up, they'll go through the foot bath because the cows were just fed um, and they were taking them from the backside towards feed. So they're going, they're getting brought through the foot bath and going towards fresh feed. So it really is a fast process. It probably takes about 10 to 15 minutes per pin when we do it. Um, and as you can see, we have a double wide foot bath that helps. Um, it just helps if one cow does decide to put the brakes on that the other cows can continue to move through the foot bath. And it's something we did spend a lot of time on planning and we have been very, very happy with the results of how easy, you know, having the foot bath at the end of the, end of the pin have been. I mean, as you can see behind me, the cows have just kind of been moseying their way through um, the pen. I'm, I'm sure some are getting distracted by me standing here. But it really is amazing how, you know, and it kind of goes back to what I said of, we have a consistent schedule. So if you're consistent with it, the cows are gonna know what you're doing, um, doing it at the same time, the, you know, the same days. And then the cows kind of understand what you're doing and it, it's a very quiet process, no cows are running. 
um, and, it, and it can be done properly and successfully um, without, without a bunch of labor. As you can see, this cow right here, she's, she's just getting done with milking. Uh, she was expected to give 37.7 pounds. Um, she's given 39. We really do like how it quarter milks each cow. So right now, she only does have one teeth left on. Um, you can see she's a second lactation cow, 114 days in milk. Um, and so really it has you know, just an amazing, you know, some of the data we can get off of T4C um, and been able to utilize on, you know, milking the right cow at the right time, you know, being able to recognize who's our best producers and, you know, who isn't or who we might need to look at from a, you know, conductivity or somatic cell standpoint of, you know, who potentially has mastitis. So utilizing some of these tools that the astronaut gives us has just been excellent. So one unique thing about our facility is that we did opt to get the uh, NQCC mastitis reader, which you can see here. They've been extremely accurate. Um, you know, just giving us another another data point that we can utilize uh, to help us manage manage the animals as best we can. Um, you can also see just in this A5 compared to whether it be the A4, it's much more organized, it's clean, it's simple. Um, clean, it's simple, it's, it's, and it's easy to work with. Um, when we're feeding cows, um, we can have the ability to feed two feed stuffs here. Um, right now, we, we still are only feeding one, but in the long term, we do look to start introducing corn gluten feed um, for some of our later in later days in milk cows or low producers, um, just to help lower the cost some more. This morning, Greg from our Apps Lately Center has joined us. And uh, Greg, could you please, you know, just kind of go through some of the unique features of our robot room, um, show everybody some of the stuff we got going on in here? Sure, sure, thanks, Greg. Um, one of the things we do is we bore the area by the robot uh, because it also makes it easier to access underneath the arm when you gotta change hoses and so forth. Um, and then it makes it straight here, a level walkthrough, so you don't have to go up and down steps. We also utilize the heat from the milk is going through the in-floor tubing, so it's all free heat in here. Uh, we take the heat off, we cool the milk, and we heat the floor at the same time. So that's a process we lose our, almost all of our robot areas now. Uh, it allows us to get a comfortable room and dry the floor up nice and keep everything fresh smelling, because when it's dry, it smells good. We got our fresh air coming in right off to the side there. That's coming in on the ground, so it's a little bit peppered, so it's not real, real cold outside air. It comes in from the air compressor rule, so it's somewhat warm. And it goes on the ground and it stays about 50 degrees, so it's never 30 below if it's really cold outside. So if you're talking about sliding lower, it makes a nice um, view and a nice easy access when you're going to swing the arm out for service. It makes it eight inches easier to reach underneath. Um, it also gives you a, a defined area so the cow stays on her rubber mat. If she puts her foot on this stainless steel diamond tread, she doesn't like it as much, so she, she kind of tends to keep her feet where they belong. Also, by lowering this, we're able to keep the hoses off the ground so they don't wear through on them uh, skid plates. So we really like that. The fact that it's lowered. So another feature that we always do nowadays is uh, we make a basically a fake scale plug. So it's uh, stainless steel uh, rock surrounded by cemented sides, and we set it in there where the scale would be if the dairyman decides to put scales later. If you don't have that capability, it's almost impossible to bust it out and fix everything up and keep yourself milking. You just leave within three minutes, five minutes, we can have this out and put the scale in and away we go. So it's the only option we don't have here is the scale, but it's easy to add. So 
That's why we do that sales process. So on a, most of our installations, we like to run all our tubing in a chase, aluminum chase, and that way it's all enclosed. So animals, birds, and whatever can't get at it. Plus we can uh, span a longer span without sagging and makes a neater looking job. Also when it's cold in these barns, it's, if you insulate your line, it, it, it's also more protected. So there's a lot of benefits to putting that chase up. It's a little more work on the install, but as you can see, there's a lot of pipe here, so it's worth protecting. So we're back in our office side, and we're gonna go quick check out our utility room. So here we are standing by compressors to help cool the mill. One of the unique features on these is you can see there's no fans. We're actually utilizing, you know, water, and that's how we're that's how we're cooling our our glycol. So, and then this is that water that then in turn ends up in our in floor heat, um, and then. Once it's in our in-floor heat, heats not only the office side, each individual uh, robot room. So really we think it's extremely efficient um, compared to using air for cooling the melt. So then if we just kind of take a walk, one past the pillar. But over here, we have a centralized dip location. So all our dip is in one location. So you, you don't see um, barrels in every single every single room. Everything's all underground and taken care, taken care of from here. So one, it's nice for our, our lady center, um, just for being able to check levels, refill them. But also it's just nice for us from a visual aspect of in each individual room, we don't have to have two or three barrels. So we've been extremely happy with, you know, having all the dips centralized. All right, so here we are in our milk house. Um, one key feature is that even though we're a robotic facility, we still are direct load. That was very important to us because at our other facility, we're direct load. Um, and the most unique feature of this room is that when a tanker gets full, um, the tanker knows to switch automatically to the next one. And you might ask, well, how does it know to do that? So over there on that wall, there's just a little tiny flow meter that's measuring how much milk is coming through. And then it, it's adding that up on the screen to our over here. It's counting how many pounds are going into the tanker. It's an extremely accurate system. Uh, we've never had a glitch with it since we started. So, you know, when a tanker gets full, a person does not need to be here to switch the tanker. Um, the tanker's just gonna switch automatically. And honestly, I see this, you know, being tremendously useful in all facilities, not just robotic facilities. Um, so really, on our standpoint, the only thing that goes on in this milk house in a day is changing filter socks. It's, it's really a, a hands-off room. Um, it's amazing how little time is spent in the milk house um, just because, you know, the, the technology that we have in here um, to be able to know when it when a tanker's full and, and you know we have trust in that technology that it works and it's been great to have. So I'd like to just say thank you for you guys uh, coming on this tour with me and, and looking at our facility. I, I hope you learned something. Um, you know and if you have any questions feel free to reach out to your Lely representative and they can get you in touch with me to help answer any questions you might have about our facility. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it and hope you all have a good day.